All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be building a reusable carousel component using Vue 3 and the Composition API. And as you can see right here, this is what we're going to be building. Now, once we're finished, you're gonna be able to insert any sort of content and make this any size that you want, but it just so happens for this demo and video, I'm going to be doing a full page image slider here. Now you can go ahead and make this half the page. You can make it, you know, 200 pixels. You can do whatever you want. But like I said, for this video, I just have it as taking up the whole page and we're going to be doing a image slider. So a few things that we're going to be utilizing here to create this component are going to be slots. And we're also going to be using props to control a few things here. So we'll have a prop to control this toggle navigation here in the middle. So if you don't want this, you can turn it off. We're also going to have a prop here for this pagination, which goes ahead and allows you to click and go to any slide that you want and it will also show you which slide you're currently on. And we'll also have a prop to enable autoplay on our carousel and also a timeout to have the autoplay have a certain amount of time in between each one of the slides when that is enabled. All right, so let me show you how this works. So if we click on the arrow here on the right, we're gonna go to the next slide and we're gonna have these transitions here using the view animation. So we're gonna be utilizing that within this component as well. And if I go back, it'll take us back to the first slide. And if we you know, continue to go to the third one, it'll take us all the way to the third one. And this pagination does work as well. So if I wanna go to a certain slide, I can go ahead and click on the first one, for example, and it'll take us back to our first slide. All right, so that's what we're gonna be building here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now for this project, we are going to be utilizing the Vue CLI to create our Vue application here. Now to utilize this, first off, what you need to have is Node.js installed on your system. Now you may already have it installed and don't know it. Now to check what you can do is if you're on Mac, open up a terminal. If you're on Windows, open up a command prompt and run the command node-v here. And if you get return a version here, that means you have Node installed on your system and that you're going to be all set to actually utilize and install the Vue CLI. CLI on your system. Now, if you don't, then click on one of these options right here and go through the installation steps and install Node onto your system. All right. Now, the second thing that you need to have is actually the Vue CLI itself. So if you don't have it, all you need to do is come over here to the documentation. I'll go ahead and have a link down below in the description. And you want to run this command right here of npm install dash g at view slash CLI. And that'll go ahead and install the view CLI onto your system so that you can go ahead and create a view application and follow along with me. Now, once again, if you don't know if you already have this installed, all you need to do is come over to your terminal or command prompt and run the command view hyphen hyphen or dash dash and we'll say version here and you can see that if you do have it installed you'll get returned this value right here at view CLI and the current version that you have on your system. So assuming that you have all this now installed on your computer, let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to be using VS Code here for my text editor. Now currently inside of VS Code, I have this empty folder called View 3 Carousel. Now the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is actually create our view application using the View CLI. So let's head up to our terminal here and we're going to go ahead and open up a new terminal and we're going to run the command of view create and now we want to go ahead and create a view application but we need to give it a name now currently since i'm in the view 3 carousel folder i'm going to go ahead and give this the name of app here and go ahead and select enter now once i do that we're going to go all the way to the bottom here of this list this may look different depending on if you've used view before and you have set any presets but regardless at the very bottom here there's going to be a option of manual manually select features. I'm going to go ahead and hover over that and select enter here. Now it's going to ask us the features that we need for this project. Now what we're going to use here is the router and also a CSS preprocessor. And I'm going to go ahead and select enter. Now it's going to ask us what version we want. We're going to go ahead and select three. And it's going to ask us to use history mode. We're going to go ahead and select yes. And we're going to uh, be asked here for an option for our preprocessor, which I'm going to go ahead and select node SAS here. Okay, and then for the uh, the rest here, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as default. So we're going to do uh, ES lint with error prevention only, and we're going to go ahead and do lint on save, and then we're going to select the option of in dedicated config files for all of our placing. Okay, and then you can have the option to save this as a preset, but I'm going to go ahead and select no here, and then that's going to go ahead and create our view application here. Now, some time is passing. We have successfully went ahead and created our view application. We can go ahead and see this if we expand our app folder here 
and you're gonna see now all these files that were created with the view CLI. Now to begin here, what I wanna do is I want to actually go into our app folder because currently we're inside of this view carousel folder. So we're gonna do CD for change directory and we're gonna go into our app folder. Now what I also wanna do here is spin up our local development server, which is going to show our application on our local host here. So we're gonna say NPM run and serve to go ahead and do that. And that's gonna go ahead and start our development server here on our local host. And we should get a URL here once it's all set. And there we go. So you can see now we have our app running here on local host port 8081. And it may be different for you if you have any other applications currently running. I currently have one other running. So that's why it defaulted to the next available port, which is 8081. Okay, so if I open that up here, you can see that we have all this uh, generated content from the view CLI, which obviously we don't want. So let's go ahead and do some cleanup here. So here inside of our app folder, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate into our SRC folder here. And inside of here, we want to do some cleanup. Now, the first place I wanna go is into our views here, and we're not gonna be utilizing this generated about view. So let's go ahead and delete this here. Now, once we do this, we should receive an error because what's happening is we're actually importing that view into our router here. So we can go into our index.js right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this a little bit right here. And we need to remove this path right here, which is using that that about view that we just went ahead and deleted. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go ahead and remove that from there and that should resolve our error. Okay, so inside of our home view here, we're also importing this component and this logo, which I don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. Now we also have it imported here, so we need to remove it as well. And then finally, we want to remove the actual component right here inside of our export default. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now we actually want to remove that component as a whole from our project here. So what we can do is come to our components folder here and we're gonna go ahead and delete this component right here, okay? So if we head back over to our application now, you should see we have a pretty empty slate. The last thing we wanna go ahead and get rid of here is this navigation which toggles between the home view and the about view, okay? So where that's located is going to be in our app.view here and we have this div right here with the ID of nav. All right, so let's go ahead and remove that. And while we're here, there is some default styling that I wanna go ahead and also remove. So let's just go ahead and copy this right here and remove that as well. All right, now one last thing I wanna go ahead and do here is inside of our assets, we have that logo for our, you know, that was included in the uh, initial creation here, which we can go ahead and delete as well. We no longer need it. And if we go ahead and delete that and we head over to our application now, you should see now we're gonna have a fresh clean slate to get started with our component. Okay, so back here in VS Code, before we begin, I do wanna mention if we head over to my assets folder right here and I expand this, I did import three images that we're gonna be using for the carousel demo. So if you do wanna follow along, I will have the link down below in the description to the GitHub repo, which will have these images included inside of that repository. Okay, now to begin here, what I wanna do is set up the general component structure. So this carousel component is gonna be made up of two components. Now the first one's gonna be for our actual carousel itself, which is gonna have all the functionality that we need for our carousel. Then the second component is gonna be our actual slide component, which we'll use for each slide that we have within our carousel. So let's go ahead and begin to actually create these components here inside of our view project. So where we're gonna do that is inside of our components folder right here. We'll go ahead and say new file and we'll say, uh, let's go carousel.view. And then we'll also create our one for slide.view here, okay? So let's begin inside of our carousel component here. So first off, I wanna go ahead and create our view boilerplate. So I'll type in view and then I'll hit tab to generate that. And let's start off here by creating our markup. Now it's gonna be very simple. All I wanna do is create a div with a class of carousel here. And then we're gonna be using slots for this component to make it reusable and dynamic so you can use it in more than one spot throughout your application. Or if you wanna use it in other applications, it's not gonna be very strict to what you have inside of here. And that's where slots are gonna come in handy. So I'll go ahead and create my slot tag right here. Now, if you've never used slots before, let me briefly show you the documentation on it, just so you can kind of get an idea of how they work on a lower level, because this may be a little confusing to you if you've never actually used these before. So if we head over to the browser here, I already pulled up the documentation here, and they give a really good example of how they work here. So in this demo or this example here, we have a component of to do button. 
And you can see inside of this component, they have this text of add to do, which you may be confused on what that actually means or how that works. So then if we head over to the second image here, you can see that this right here is the markup or the template for this to do button component. And as you can see, we have this slot tag right here. And as you can see, if we go down one more slide, when the component renders, the slot tag will be replaced by the add to do, making this right here very dynamic. So we can add anything we want inside of this to do button. And that is what the text will be outputted when we actually use it here. So hopefully that makes sense. And this is kind of more used on a lower level here and we'll be using it on a much more, I guess, higher level. But I just wanted to show you a quick little example of how slots actually work if you are new to them. Okay, so that's going to be the general markup we need for our carousel. Now, here is where we're also going to do a lot of our JavaScript for the functionality, but we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is create the template for our slide here. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and create our boilerplate here and we'll go ahead and do view tab. Now inside of here, it's going to be a little bit more, not much. We're going to do a div with a class of slide here. Now we want to use view animations here to go ahead and transition between each one of our slides. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create a transition tag here and I should be able to, it doesn't like it. So let's go ahead and do this the old way. We'll say transition here and we're going to go ahead and give this a name and we're going to call it slide. Okay. And then we can go ahead and close it like that. Now inside of here, what I want to do is the same thing we did with our carousel. We're going to go ahead and accept a slot in here so that we can make this slide component dynamic. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say slot like that. And that's going to be the general markup here for our two components. Now with that completed, in order to start using our carousel component here, we need to import it into the file of our choice. Now for this project, I'm going to be importing it here into our home.view file. So first thing I want to go ahead and do is actually import our file here within our script tag. So we're going to say import and we'll say carousel from, and we can do dot dot go into our components folder. And then we can grab the carousel file here. And then I'm going to copy and paste this down because the next one we want to import is going to be our slide component as well. So then we'll say slide here. And then inside of our export default here, we have this component, uh, components property right here. So we wanna go ahead and also define carousel and then we'll do comma and then we'll say slide here. Now inside of our actual template here, this is where we're gonna use these two components, okay? So normally when you import components, if you're not using slots, you would just go ahead and say, uh, let's see here, carousel like this. And then you would close it off like that and you'd be all set. But since we're using slots, we're going to want to put content in between or inside of this carousel component. So what we want to do is have a starting carousel tag and then we're going to go ahead and have an ending carousel tag like this. And then all the data or information we put inside of here will be replaced with this slot tag right here. Okay. Now inside of this, we're going to go ahead and nest our slide. So we'll say slide. And the same thing uh, is going to apply for this as well. Since we're using slots, we don't want to just go ahead and have a slash here. We're going to have a opening slide tag and then we're going to have a closing slide tag like this. Now, what we want to do inside of here is we want to have our slide content. Now, just to go ahead and demonstrate this for right now, if we go ahead and do a div here and let's go ahead and do a paragraph tag and say hello. Now this may or may not work depending on if we have the styling property set up right, but it does. And as you can see right here, we now have hello output it from uh, this slot right here inside of our slide. Okay, so that's all working correctly. Now, one thing I do wanna do here really quick is for this carousel right now, if we head back over to our actual browser here, if I inspect this, you can see the sizing is probably not gonna be correct. So if I open up our body tag here inside of our app, you can see that currently this is only 18 pixels tall, but it is taking up the entire width. Now to make this carousel take up the entire width of our page, I need to add some styling to it. So what we're gonna do is on our carousel tag right here, I'm gonna add a class of carousel, okay? And then what we need to do is inside of our home view, we need to open up some style tags here. So we'll say style and we'll say SCSS scoped here. And then we're gonna copy and paste in this carousel tag. And what I wanna do is we're gonna give it a few properties here. So we're gonna say max height is gonna be 100 VH. 
And then we're going to set the property of height here to 100 VH here. Okay, so now if we head back over to our actual application here, you can see that now this carousel is going to take up 100 view height of the actual uh, browser window here, which is what we want because it's going to be a full page image slider. So here inside of our app.view, what I want to do really quick is a reset from a styling standpoint on our entire project because if we head back over to our application here, you can see when I hover over this div, the class of carousel, and even home for that example, we have this white box around our content. That's because we haven't reset the margin padding and also set a box size into border box. So if we go ahead and do that, it'll go ahead and resolve our issue here. So let's head back over to our project here and we're going to use a asterisk here if I even pronounce that right and what the heck and then we'll go ahead and open up this and we're gonna say margin we'll say zero we'll do padding set that to zero and we're gonna set the box sizing here to border box oops border box so now if we save that and head back over you should see now we have gotten rid of that white space around our actual content here so currently within our carousel, we're outputting one slide and that slide's content is saying hello. Now I want to go ahead and update that. So as you recall, I went ahead and imported three images here into our project earlier on, which we have right here. And I want to go ahead and create a slide for each one of our images. Now, first off, what I want to do is actually open up our setup options for the composition API. So let's go ahead and say setup here and we'll go ahead and open this up. And there we go. Now, what I want to do here is I want to create a slide for each one of our images. Now, instead of actually creating the markup like this and doing three and having an image tag in here, we're going to use a V4 loop. And to use a V4 loop, we need some data to iterate through. And in our case, what we're going to do here is create a array, which has the actual image names in here. So that way it'll create a slide for each uh, each image that we have and if we go ahead and add like three or four more it'll be dynamic and I'll put them for the number of images we have in that array okay so hopefully that makes sense and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those two slides here okay so what we need to do here is create some data so we're gonna say const and we're gonna go ahead and call this data carousel slides and we're going to set this equal to an array and we're going to say bg1 because if we go to our assets folder here you can see i have the images named bg1 2 and 3. so then we'll do a comma here we'll say bg i need the quotes bg2 and then we'll go and say bg3 like that now in order to use this data inside of our template tag here we need to return it within the setup option here so we'll say return like this and we'll say carousel slides now on our slide tag here what we can do is we can do a v4 like this and we're going to go ahead and do some parentheses here we're going to say slide and i want to pass an index value here because we need to assign whenever we use a v4 loop in view we need to assign it a unique key now we could go ahead and use the slide itself but i always tend to use an index here to keep it consistent so we'll do like that and then we're going to say in and then carousel slides and then we need to go ahead and do our key here so I'm going to go ahead and bind a key here and we'll say to index okay so now if we go back over to our application here we should see three hellos which we do because we have three items in our array now what I want to do here is instead of outputting this paragraph tag I actually want to output the image okay so what I'm also going to do is we're going to keep this div here, but I want to go ahead and give it a class of slide info. Now inside of here, we're going to have our image tag and we're going to go ahead and actually do a bind here. And inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to pass require. And then we want to go ahead and navigate to the path of these images. So since we're going to be using some interpolation, I'm going to use some back ticks here and we're going to do dot dot slash and go to our assets. And then here's we're going to do some interpolation. So right here inside of our carousel slides array, we're actually outputting the name of the image here. So we'll do money sign brackets and we're going to say slide right here, which is the value we gave um, that in our for loop here. And then we'll say dot JPG here. So now if we head back over to our project here, it's going to look very ugly. We'll have all three of these images here if we scroll down. OK. So we don't want the images to currently look like this. You want to do some formatting to them. So what we'll do is inside of our style here, 
we're going to come down below carousel. Actually, we can do this within carousel and then we'll go ahead and target our slide info here and we're going to pass it a few properties. Now, if you recall within our carousel component here, uh, actually we didn't define that. So what we'll do is actually we'll just go ahead and say position relative here. So we want this carousel to be position relative. And then what we're going to do is we're going to position the slide info absolute to this carousel right here. So we'll say position and we'll go absolute here. And we're going to say top zero left zero and we want the width to be 100% and we're going to say max height 100% and then height itself 100% here like that. Now I also want to do some styling on our images here and then what we're, we're going to say here is a min width of 100% oops 100% we're going to say width or sorry we're going to do a height here of 100% and we're also going to pass the property of object fit and we're going to pass that to cover. So hopefully now if we go back over to our actual carousel here things should start to look a little bit better. Now currently you may notice that we're only seeing one image and that's actually what we want. The additional two are actually being overlapped by this image you're seeing right here and that's because we position each one of our slide info to be absolute to our carousel. So I can actually show you this if we go to inspect here and we open up our carousel here and we have our three slides which is great now if i go to break this down you'll see that all the actual slides are here but they're just being hidden by this image right here now how we're going to handle this is we're going to have a data value that's going to be a number and it's going to equal the current slide now if you recall if we go back to our application here we have this index value that we're passing inside of our uh, v4 loop here. So what we're going to do is we only want to show this slide info if the index is equal to the current slide data that we're going to apply here inside of our carousel component. Now to create this data value, we need to go ahead and create our setup option here inside of our carousel component. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say setup here and then let's go ahead and create that data value. So we're going to go ahead and create a new value here, a const, and we'll say current slide. And we're going to set this equal to, and we're going to use a ref here because we want this data value to be reactive. We're going to be updating it. So we need to make sure that when we create this data, we go ahead and set it equal to a ref here. So, and I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to one because we want the current slide to start off on the first one. And we can go ahead and change this later on. Now, to use ref inside of the setup option here, we need to import it before we can actually use it. So we'll say import, and we'll use our brackets here, and we're going to say ref and we'll go from and then view like that. So if we save that, now we'll have access to use ref inside of the setup option here. Now, just like we did inside of, I believe the home view here, we need to go ahead and return this data value in order to use it inside of our template here. So let's go ahead and do a few line breaks here and we'll return this and we'll say current slide. Now we need to be able to access this value of current slide inside of the home view here. Now, what we can do is actually on this slot, we can bind this value right here of current slide so that we can use it here inside of the home view. So what we'll do is we'll say current slide equals current slide like that. And then what we need to do is come over to the home view here and we need to look for that value here on the component. So what we can do is we'll come over to, let's see, after the class and we'll say V slot like this. And we're going to go ahead and look for that value of current slide. So we'll say current slide. Uh, what do we do? Oh, we forgot the uh, quotes here. So we'll say equals and then we'll do our brackets and we're gonna look for a current slide like that. So now we can actually use this value here inside of our component of carousel. Now, where you wanna do it is going to be right here on this div of slide info. So we're gonna go ahead and say V show. Now we only want to show this if the current slide is equal to the index. Now, 
the index of the very first one is going to be zero. So that wouldn't really work correctly. So what we want to do here is we want to add one to our index so that the first slide will have an index of one. Okay. Now there may have been other ways to go about this. We could set the current slide to equal zero and that would resolve it, but it just makes sense that the first slide would have a value of one and you can go ahead and do it whatever you want, but this is the way that I chose to do it. So we're going to say current. slide and we're going to say equals the index which is right here passing it inside of our for loop right here and we're going to say plus one so now we should go back to our application here and we should be able to see that we have the first image if i refresh this here you can see that now we have the first image inside of our carousel so now if i go back to our carousel here and we update this to be number two we go back to our application here and refresh or we don't have to refresh it you can see that now it's going to show slide number two and you can see how we can use that value of current slide to update which actual slide we want to see now currently the only way for us to change pages or change slides within our application is to manually come inside of our code here and update the number that we see inside of this current slide uh, data value here which will go ahead and update the slide accordingly here now that's not very feasible and that's not going to be a very good way of making a carousel so what i want to do is create some buttons here on the left and on the right to go ahead and toggle between which page we're currently on or each slide we're currently on so let's go ahead and begin to implement that now for the icons that we're going to be using here for this toggle left and toggle right we're going to be using the font awesome library so if you head over to cdnjs.com and look up for our look up the font awesome library i'll go ahead and have it linked down below as well we can go ahead and copy this link tag here head back over to our project and inside of our app.view or sorry our actual public folder and in, uh, index.html i must go ahead and copy and paste that link tag in here and now we can have access to the font awesome library here so let's go ahead and close that out and close this out now inside of our carousel component is where we're actually going to create this toggling or our navigation so let's go ahead and go below our slot here and we're going to say navigation and let's go ahead and create our markup here so we're going to have a new div which is going to have a class of navigate here now inside of this what we're going to do is have two separate divs for our left and our right toggle so we'll say div and we'll give this a class of toggle dash page and we'll also give it a class of left here now what we want to go ahead and do here is actually get one of our chevron icons from font awesome so if we head back over to my browser here i already have this pulled up so the first one we want to get is going to be the left so i'm going to go ahead and open this up right here and copy this i class come back over here and let's paste that in now all i'm going to do is copy and paste this down one more time because the markup is going to be the same except i'm going to go ahead and give this a class of right here and we're going to go ahead and give it a well we can go ahead and copy this over here as well just to show you that we have the right chevron here and let's go ahead and actually paste that in so if we head back over to our application here you should see if we refresh it we should have those icons somewhere uh, let me see if they're being generated here. It's an inspect this uh, carousel navigate. So they're at the top here, but they're not clearly visible. Okay, so we need to do some styling here. So let's head down to our style tag here. And first off, what we need to do is give this the uh, lang here. And we're going to say SCSS here. Okay, now what we want to do is target our navigate class. So we'll say navigate like this. And what we want to do is we want to give it some padding. We're going to say zero on the top and bottom, 16 on the left and right. We're going to give it a height of 100%. We're going to pass it a width of 100%. And if you recall, the carousel component is position absolute, or sorry, position relative. So we want to position this navigate to be absolute to that. So we'll say position here and we'll go absolute. Okay, then what we're going to do is display this as flex and then we want to justify the content to the center and we also want to align the items here to the center as well. All right, so hopefully if we go back over to our application now, we should see that we have our two icons smack dab here in the center, which is great, but we still need to do some additional styling here. So what I want to do is we have the class of toggle page on our icons. So I want to go ahead and target those. 
and then I want to display this as flex and I want to have them take up equal amounts of space. So we'll pass the value of flex and we'll pass in one here. Now, what I want to do is we have the right icon here. So if we go back over now, you can see that the left one is in a good position, but I want the right one to be on the farthest right hand side of our actual view here, which it's not. So to achieve this, what we can do is we can target the right right here and we can justify the content to the flex end and that should go ahead and push it all the way over here to the right hand side which looks great now the last thing i want to go ahead and do here is actually style up our icon so i'm going to go ahead and target the icon itself we want to give it a cursor of pointer we're going to display it as flex we want to align the items to the center here and then what we also want to do is justify the content to the center. And we want to give this a border. Let's see, not an actual border. We want to do a border radius here of 50%. And then we want to give it a width of 40 pixels and a height of 40 pixels here. And then we're going to give it a background color, which is going to be a uh, like a purplish here. We're going to say pound sign 6347. C7, and then we want to make the icon white because currently it is a color of black by default. So we'll say color and we can say FFF, and that should do it for our navigation styling here. So if we head back over, you can see we're going to be left with something like this. Now, what we need to do next is each time we click on the back or the forward, we want to go ahead and increment or uh, decrease the current slide data value that we have inside of our carousel component. Now to handle the toggling of going forward and going backwards within our carousel, we're gonna need two different functions, one to go forward and one to also go backwards. Now, one thing that I do want to do prior to creating these functions is I want to create a new data value, which we're gonna be using inside of our functions. And the data that I wanna go ahead and create here is gonna have the name of get slide count. So we want to go ahead and create a data value here of the slide count because we're going to need it when we actually create our function because if we were to keep incrementing the value of current slide and say for example we only have three slides and if we keep hitting the next and we keep incrementing it by one you can see where this would actually get become broken and we'd get to four or five and therefore if we go back to our home view here this would not equate to true because we don't have four or five slides we only have three okay so what i want to do is set this value equal to a ref and i want to set it to null because when we use a setup uh, option here this stuff all runs before the component is actually uh, mounted to the dom so we can't actually get access to the amount of slides that we have within our actual carousel so what we need to do is i want to import a lifecycle hook of mounted and when you use view three or the setup uh setup option or composition api it's actually called on mounted here so what I wanna do is right below this, we're gonna go ahead and do a few line breaks here. I wanna go ahead and run the on mounted lifecycle hook here. So we're gonna say on mounted, and this is gonna accept a arrow function here. Now, what I wanna do is I want to set this value right here to the amount of slides that we have within our carousel here. So to dynamically set this up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say get slide count and we want to change the value. So whenever we use the composition API, we just can't say this equals this. We gotta say, uh, we gotta say the data value here and we gotta say dot value, okay? And we wanna set the value of this data right here to a document dot query selector all. And if you recall, if we go back to our slide component here, we gave this the div of slide. So what I wanna do is I wanna look for all the classes of slide and I wanna get the length of that and I wanna store it here inside of this get slide count value here. Okay, so we're gonna say dot slide and then I wanna go ahead and get the length of that, okay? So now if I were to go ahead and say console dot log here and we say get slide count dot value if we head back over to our application here and we go to inspect we should see that it's going to be three okay so if i were to say for example add a additional slide to this say we add let's do 
BG1 again, and we refresh it, and we go back to our console, you can see now it is four, and this is going to be set up uh, dynamically so that whatever amount of slides we have, the carousel will still work. Okay, so let's head back over to our application here, and we can actually remove this console.log statement here. And what I want to do is start to set up the functions for toggling the carousel to go forward and also to go backwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our actual next toggler. So I'll go ahead and say next slide here and let's go ahead and create our new function. So we're going to say const and we're going to say next slide here and we're going to set this equal to a arrow function here. All right. So. Like I mentioned, if we continue to click on the next slide function here, it's going to increment it to a number that we don't have inside of our carousel. So say, for example, like I said, we have uh, you know three slides. If the current slide value is four, that's not going to work. So what I wanna do is an if check here. So what I wanna check is if the current slide dot value is equal to the get slide count dot value, then I automatically want to set the current slide dot value to one because at that point we have gotten to the end and I want to loop back around to the very first slide. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then if that is true, we'll go ahead and return out of here. Now, if that's not true, then all I want to do here is say current slide dot value is going to be plus equals one. So we're going to increment the current slide value by one and that's going to be our function here. Now, in order to use this function inside of our template, we have to go ahead and return it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and return that and that should go ahead and resolve the error of it being unused, okay? Now, the last function I wanna go ahead and create here is to go ahead and go back a slide. So we'll go ahead and put a comment here and say prev slide. And we'll say const prev slide equals here, our arrow function. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different. So I wanna go ahead and run a if check here. And I wanna say if, the person is clicking on this function and the current slide value equals one that I just want to keep it equaling one because we don't want to go back. We don't want to go ahead. And I guess we could loop back to the very last one, but I don't want to do that. I just want them to stay at the very first slide. You can go ahead and manipulate this any way you want, but this is the way I chose to make this functionality. So what we're going to say here is if current slide dot value is equal to one, then all I want to do here is set the current slide dot value to one. Or we could just go ahead and return out of the function. I guess either one would be fine. We'll go ahead and just return like that, okay? So what we uh, uh, wanna do if this is not true is we wanna go ahead and decrease the current slide value by one. So we'll say current slide dot value is going to be minus equals one, okay? And then the same thing we have to do here is we have to go ahead and export or return this function here. Now, we need to go ahead and call this function each time we go ahead and click on our icon here. So what I wanna do is on each one of our icons, I wanna go ahead and call that function. So we'll say at click, and on our chevron left, we're gonna go ahead and call the prev slide function. And then on our uh, chevron right here, we're gonna go ahead and call our next slide function. Okay, so now if we head back over to our application, fingers crossed here, I should be able to refresh this here. And let's go ahead and set the current one back to one here just to test this out here. So you can see now we're back on the very first slide. So if I click on this button right here, we should go to the second, we should go to the third. Now, if I get all the way to the end and I click this, we should go back to the first one. But if we click on the first one and go back, we should, oh, we actually do go back to the first one here. Why is that actually working? So. Uh, let me see here. So nothing is wrong with our functions we created. It's just that I forgot to remove this additional slide that I created here inside of our carousel slides data array. So if I remove that and we go back to test this, we should no longer be able to go back past the first page, which we weren't ever doing in the first place, but it's because we had that additional fourth slide. So if I click back on here, you'll see that we won't go anywhere. But if I click on the toggle forward here, we'll go to the second slide, third, and we're now successfully able to toggle between each one of our slides. So now we're able to toggle back and forth between our slides here, but I still think one important part is missing to our carousel, which is going to be what I would like to call pagination here so that the user knows how many slides are in the carousel and what slide they're currently on. So let's go ahead and begin to work on implementing that here into our carousel. So 
What I want to do is create our markup here first. So right below our navigation here, let's go ahead and create a comment and we'll say pagination here. And then we're going to create a new div, which is going to have the class of pagination like that. And then inside of here, what I want to do is create a span tag. Now, if you recall, we have this value of get slide count, which is going to have the amount of slides within our carousel. So I want to run a V4 loop here to output a span for each slide that we have inside of our carousel. So in order to use this value here inside of our template, we need to return it here. So what I'm going to do is copy this and we're going to return it like that. OK, so then what we'll do here is we'll run a V4 here. And we're going to say for each slide and actually I want to put this in parentheses. We're going to have an index. So we'll say slide index in get slide count like that. And if I was to go ahead and then we also need to do a key here. So we'll say index like that. Now, if I was to go ahead and output here, let's say, for example, the slide, we should, I believe, get represented a number. I'm almost certain. So if we go back to our application here, if I refresh this, uh, we're probably not going to see it because once again, it's probably hidden behind our carousel here. But if I open this up, you'll see we have one, two and three to represent the three slides that we have within our carousel. So that is all working great. Now, what I also want to do is I want to add a specific class for the current slide so we can go ahead and differentiate the one from or differentiate the slide that is currently active uh, from the other slides within our carousel here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bind a class. We're going to say colon class and we're going to go ahead and open up our curly brackets here and we want to add the class of active here. Now, we only want to have this class be uh, or apply this active class if the index equals the current slide minus one, because as you recall, or we could do index plus one, uh, I think we actually will do that to keep things consistent. So we'll say index plus one like that. So we only want to apply this class if the index plus one equals the current slide, because as you recall, the current slide is not going to be zero, which would be the initial value for the first span here inside of this V4 loop. So that's how we'll do that. So if this is equal to true, then we're going to go ahead and apply an active class on that span, which if we go back over to our code here, you can see that the first slide is active. So this first span has a class of active. And if I was to go ahead and navigate to two, you can see now this class has active and so forth with our third. And if we go back to the first one, you can see how that works. So everything is working as it should. Now, what we also want to do is we're going to have a function here, which I think we'll hold off on actually adding because we're going to get an error. But when we click on one of these spans, you want to go to that actual current slide within our carousel. OK, so before we go ahead and get into that, let's go ahead and style up our pagination here. So let's go down to our styling here and let's collapse our navigate here and let's target our pagination. OK, now what we want to do in here is very similar to how we have our navigation. We want to position this absolute and we're going to go ahead and do bottom 24 pixels here and I want to have the width be 100% here. We're going to display this as flex. We want to justify the content to the center and also align all the items to the center. Now with Flexbox, we can use a property called gap to add separation between each one of our span or each one of our flex items. So we're going to go ahead and say gap right here. And I want to add 16 pixels worth of space between each one of our spans within this flex container. OK, and then what we want to do is style up our span here. So first off, I want to go ahead and give it a cursor pointer. We want to give this a width 20 pixels, height of 20 pixels here. And we want these to be circles or you can leave them squares, whatever you want to do. But for this demo, I'm going to do circles. So we're going to say border radius and say 50% here. And then we're going to give it a background color here of white, which is FFF. And then we're also going to apply a box shadow, which I'm going to copy and paste in like this to go ahead and make it pop a little bit. So if we were to go over to our application now, we should see that we're getting this like that. Uh, but the one thing I do want to remove is the numbers. I don't like those. So we're not going to keep those in there. That was just for testing. So 
Let's go ahead and remove that. We're actually gonna have nothing inside of our span. They're just gonna be circles. Okay, so as you can see, that looks really good. But we can't really differentiate which is the current uh, active slide because we don't have our active class set up yet. So all we need to do is come back down to our styling here and we want to make an active class. So we'll say active. And we're gonna change the background color here to 6347C7. Like that, which is a color we already used here for our toggling for our navigation. So now if we head back up here, you can see as I go along here and we change slides, you can see that this is going to change accordingly. So now we're on the second slide, which is active with the purple and then the third. Now, the one issue is if we click on this dot, nothing happens. So we need to create a function for when we click on the slide, it changes our current slide data value to that slide value. Okay, so it's actually going to be a pretty easy function. So where we're going to create this is going to be right below our previous slide here. And what we want to do is we'll create a new function and call this go to slide equals a arrow function here. And all we want to do is say current slide dot value. And what we're going to do here is we're going to pass a parameter here when we call this function from our template and we're going to pass in the index value here. So what we want to do here is we don't just want to set the current slide value to the index because as you recall, the index for, for example, the first slide is going to be zero. So for each one of, uh, for each uh, value of our index here, we want to go ahead and uh, add one to it. So that way the first slide is going to equal one so that the current slide value will go ahead and also equal one. So hopefully it's not too confusing what we're doing here, but we've already done it a few times within our actual component here. Okay. So that's how the function is going to look. So in order for us to use this function inside of our template here, we need to export it as always. So let's go ahead and do a comma and we'll export that. And then what we want to do here is on our span, we're going to hand uh, pass a click handle here and we're going to go ahead and run this function. And don't forget, we want to pass along the current index of whatever one we're clicking on. Okay. So now if we head back over to our carousel here and we refresh it. So say for example, the user wants to go to the third one, they can now click on this and it's going to go to the third slide. And if they want to go back to the first one, they can do that. If they want to go to the second one. They can also do that. So now we're uh, successfully able to show which slide we're on and also click on the pagination here to go to that current slide. Now, currently the only way for us to change slides within our carousel is to select these buttons right here we have for our navigation, or we can use our pagination. Imagination. Now, one feature that I would like to add to our carousel, as you see with a lot of other carousels, is the ability for it to autoplay. So let's go ahead and begin to work on implementing that. So here inside of our carousel component, what I first want to do is create a few new values of data. Now, the first value of data that I want to create is going to control whether or not the autoplay feature is enabled on our carousel or not. So we'll go ahead and say const. We'll do auto play enabled here. And we'll set this equal to a ref and we'll say true. Now the other or the second value of data I want to go ahead and create is going to be controlling the amount of time between each slide when autoplay is enabled. So as you know, it'll be more or less called a timeout. So after so many seconds, it'll change to the next slide. So we'll go ahead and create another value here and we'll call this time out duration. And we'll set this equal to a ref as well. And we're going to be uh, by default, we'll just say 5,000 seconds. That is the time you want to go ahead and have in between each slide changing. Okay. So now that we have these two values of data, let's go ahead and create our function here. So for this autoplay feature, what we want to do is after this timeout duration right here, we want to proceed to the next slide. So what we're going to use in this instance is what we call a set interval, which is going to execute a a uh, block of code after so much time over and over again. So what we're going to do here is we'll go ahead and add a new comment here and we'll say auto play and let's go ahead and create our function here. So we'll say const auto play is going to be equal to a arrow function here. Now let's go ahead and use our set interval uh, method here and this accepts a callback. So we'll use our arrow function here. Now how this works if you never use a set interval before is first off, whatever we want to run after so much time, we pass right in here. So to go ahead and proceed to the next slide, we already have that logic within our actual project here and is in this function of next slide. So 
all we need to do is call this function right here of next slide inside of our set interval here. And then we already have the timeout duration. So you pass the value that you want uh, here as a second parameter within the set interval method for the amount of time you want to have before this code is executed here. So we'll just use our timeout duration dot value. And this is going to make a dynamic so that we can go ahead and just change this number up here and it'll go ahead and change the value or the timeout that we have inside of our autoplay here. Now, what we want to do is because we don't want this to play automatically, we want it to only play if this value right here is true. So what we'll do is we'll come right below our autoplay function here and we're going to say if right here, auto play enabled dot value is true, then what we're going to do is we're going to run our uh, autoplay function right here. So we'll say auto play like that. Okay, so now that we have this, so if we head back up to our actual data here, you can see that right now it is true, and this should go ahead and equate to true. So if we head over to our actual, let's see here, our carousel, we should be able to refresh it here, and after five, five seconds, we should see that the carousel is going to automatically proceed to the next slide, and there you go. That is our autoplay feature working. It is going to increment to the next slide every five seconds here, and if we wanted to update that, all we need to do is change this value right here inside of our ref to whatever amount of seconds that you want. So currently when we go from slide to slide, that change is very abrupt, as you'll see here in a second. And I want to go ahead and update that. So you may recall earlier on when we created our slide component here, we went ahead and wrapped our slot tag with this transition tag here, and we gave it a name of slide. Now, when we use a transition tag within view, it supplies us with a few classes that we can use to animate this and make our transition a lot smoother. Now, if you're new to the view animations or the view transitions, I'll go over to the documentation really quick and kind of fill you in on how they work here. So. I'll leave the link down below in the description as well, but we are supplied with six different classes when we use the transition tag. So we have enter from, enter to, enter active, and then we also have leave from, leave to, and leave active. So you can see right here, v, uh, v enter from currently has an opacity of zero. And then what we want to do is have it go from, we want it to start at zero and we want to go ahead and have it go to an opacity one. And we pass the opacity value of one with this enter to class. And then what we do with interactive is we actually control that transition with, you know, what we want to transition, the time that we want to transition it over and the easing. Okay. Okay, and the same applies here for leave from, leave to, and leave active. So that's a quick little summary on how they work, but if you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend digging into this documentation. It's a very good resource, so I'll go ahead and leave that down below in the description. But what we're going to be doing here is very simple, and I don't think it should be too confusing, okay? So first off, what I want to go ahead and do is on our style tag here, we want to apply a lang here, and we'll say scss. Now, the first thing I want to go ahead and do here, the first class. So as you recall, if you look at this documentation here, we have V enter from. Now, since we gave our transition here a name of slide, we can actually replace this V portion right here and we can use slide. So we're going to say slide enter active. Now, I also want to apply the same styling or the same transitions to our leave active. So I'm going to go ahead and group this together. So we'll say slide leave active here. Now for the class that I want to apply here, we're just going to say transition here. And we're going to say we want to transition the opacity. I want it to have a 0.7 second duration. So we'll say 0.07s. And the easing is going to be ease in out. Okay, so that's going to be it for our enter and leave active. Now we're also going to do some shared grouping here of styling for opacity for the enter from and leave to. So we want our slide. So we'll say slide enter from. So we want it to initially come in from the opacity of zero here. So we're going to say opacity zero. Now, when it leaves, we also want to have the opacity of zero. So we can also add to this uh, right here, our other class, which is going to be slide leave two. So we want both of these classes to have the opacity of zero. Now that leaves us with slide enter two. And then we also want to have our slide leave active here. And we're going to set this. Let's go back up here. 
we're gonna set this to have an opacity of one. So now what's gonna happen is when our slide comes in, it's gonna start at zero, it's going to go to one, and then after our duration of five seconds, it's going to start at one again, and it's gonna go back to zero, and it's gonna make the transition between each one of our slides a lot smoother. So let's go ahead and check that out. So really quick here, I made a mistake on our group styling here. This should actually be uh, leave from, not leave active. So now that that's changed, let's go ahead and check on our application. So instead of it being so abrupt here, let me go ahead and refresh it. We should see now that we go from slide to slide, it's gonna be very smooth and we're gonna have that opacity transition from each one of our slides as you just seen right there. Now to make our carousel component more dynamic, I want to make use of props. Now, why this is gonna be useful is, let's say for example, a user has this carousel component right here, implement it four times within their application. And let's say in an instance or two, they don't feel it's necessary to have the navigation or the pagination, or let's say they want to disable autoplay on just that one instance. Now, currently with how we have things set up, we have to disable it for all instances, and we can't just disable it for one or two specific instances. Now, like I said, we're going to make use of props, which is going to be able to make this possible. So how this is going to look is let's say for example we have our carousel component implemented like we do inside of our home view what we can do is we can pass our prop so we're going to have a prop of let's say navigation here and we can pass it a boolean value of true or false and then we can look for this uh, prop of navigation on our carousel component and we can look what the value the user is passing here and then decide whether or not we're going to show or hide our navigation here now, by default, what we'll do here, if a user doesn't specify this prop right here, then we'll go ahead and automatically enable the navigation. And if they want to go ahead and disable it, all we'll have to do is pass this prop of navigation here and pass the value of false. So here inside of our carousel component, let's first define the props that we're going to be using here. So inside of our export default here, I'm going to go ahead and define our props and open up empty array here. And then let's go ahead and define our props. I'm going to put a comma right there to resolve that error. Now, the first prop that we're going to have is for autoplay. So I'm going to go ahead and call this prop start auto play. Now, we could pick a better name, but you can see here we already have the name of autoplay enabled here, and we also have the function of autoplay. So if you want to go ahead and rename these, uh, go ahead and you know feel free to do so. But this is what I came up with, so let's go ahead and actually spell that correctly here. Now, the second pr uh, prop here we're going to have is for our timeout duration here. So we'll say timeout like this. Then we're also going to have one for navigation and then our pagination here, and we forgot the quotes. Okay, so now that we have this, what we also need to do is because navigation and pagination are going to control this right here inside of our template, we need to actually create some data here inside of our setup options. So let's go ahead and create a new da value date here called pagination enabled, and we're going to set this equal to a ref here. Now, in order to use the values here inside of our props, we need to define props here inside of our setup parameters. So we'll say props like that. And now we will have access to these props if a user defines them on the actual component right here. Okay, so what we're going to do for our pagination enabled here is we're gonna use what they call a conditional operator here. So we can go ahead and store the value of pagination enabled here using a conditional operator here. So what it's first gonna do is going to look at a, a condition followed by a question mark. So if this right here is true, then this value right here will be uh, returned. And if it's false, then we'll go ahead and return this. So what we're gonna do here for our pagination enabled data is we're gonna go ahead and look if a user define the pagination prop on the actual component here. And if they do, then we're gonna go ahead and set this right here, pagination enabled to the value, which will be a Boolean value of what that user has passed through. Okay, so how we're gonna do this is we can say props dot pagination and then what we want to do is you want to check if it's undefined. Okay, so we're going to say undefined. Now, if it's undefined, we're going to go ahead and set this by default to be true. So we'll put our question mark here and then we'll say true. Now, if it isn't fault or undefined, then we want to go ahead and pass the value that they pass here for the prop of pagination. So we'll say 
props dot pagination here. Okay. And we're going to do this for the additional uh, timeout duration, autoplay enabled. And we're also going to create one other value of data for our navigate here. Now, in order for us to use pagination enabled, we have to return it down here as we've been doing with all of our data and our function. So we'll have that here. And then all we need to do is use this value right here, go over to our pagination, and we're gonna go ahead and run a V if here. And we're gonna say, if this value is true, then we'll show this pagination right here. So by default, we don't have the pagination prop on our component here, so it should be showing by default here. So let's go ahead and check this out. So if we refresh here, we should still see we have our pagination. Now, if we go over to our home component here and we pass the value here of our prop of pagination and we set this equal to false, now if we go back to our application here and we refresh, we should no longer see our pagination down here. So continuing on here, let's do the same thing for our autoplay enabled, our timeout duration, and also our navigation. Now, we haven't yet created the data value for our navigation, so what we can do is actually duplicate this pagination enabled data value right here, and then just replace the name and then the actual prop here. So we'll say nav enabled here instead of pagination. And then for the prop, what I'll do is copy this navigation value here and where we have it say props.pagination, we'll change this to props.navigation here. Now in order to use this inside of our template, because recall we want to disable the markup right here of our navigate, so we need to return it down here inside of our return statement. So we'll go ahead and return that here. And then we'll come back up to our template and we'll do a VF. So we'll say VF here and we'll say if nav enabled is true. Okay. Now for our autoplay enabled, what we can do is I'm going to copy and paste this value right here inside of our pagination and we'll replace it inside of the autoplay enabled here. And then we'll go ahead and copy and paste the prop value right here and we'll paste it in with our start autoplay prop. Now the last one we need to do here is going to be our timeout duration, which will be a little bit different. So I'm gonna go and copy and paste this one more time and then we'll paste it in here. And then we'll say timeout like this and we'll change it right there. And then what we need to do here, instead of defining it true, we need to provide a actual number. So by default, what we'll do is we had it at 5,000, which is five seconds. So we'll go ahead and leave it as 5,000 here. Okay, so now with all this complete, we can head over to our actual uh, use of our carousel component and define these props if we want to customize it with our autoplay, our timeout duration, our pagination, and also our navigation. So currently within our carousel, we have our navigation and our pagination disabled here because we have these two props of navigation and pagination and we have set both values here to false. So if we head over to our actual carousel here and I do a refresh, you should see that we no longer have these toggle buttons here on the left and right and our pagination is disabled here. But as you can see, autoplay is still enabled. So let's go ahead and disable that because maybe at this point we don't want it within our carousel. So all we have to do is add our prop of start start autoplay here. So we'll say start autoplay and we'll set this equal to false. But if we're not going to have autoplay, we'd have no way to transition to the next slide. So this would be a case where we'd want to have our navigation on this use of the carousel enabled. So we'll go ahead and say navigation and set that to true. So uh, yep, yeah, that should work. So if I do a refresh here, we should no longer see that autoplay is going to be enabled here and we have access to our toggle buttons here to go to the next slide. And if I click this, it all still works great. Now, one last prop I do want to demonstrate here is going to be our timeout. Now for this, we'd have to have autoplay enabled here. So we'll set this to true and let's go ahead and bind our timeout prop here. And by default, we have set this to the value of 5,000, which is five seconds. But for this example and to demonstrate how this works, let's do something a little bit quicker here and do the value of 2,000, which is two seconds. So now if we head back over to our carousel and we do a refresh here, you should see that the slides are going to transition in increments of two seconds, which is a lot quicker than what we had by default here. So let's go ahead and change that back to 5,000 here. So as you can see with the use of props, we're able to customize our carousel and enable and disable features very easily and not affect the overall component. All right, so that's going to go and wrap it up here for our View 3 component. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, I would really appreciate you guys leaving a like down below and subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.